Welcome back, he fans around the world. This is Scott Toy Guru Nightlick here with episode two of the director's commentary for Masters of the Universe Classics. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the main man himself, He-Man, the, uh, the character that most of the world actually recognizes as made by Mattel. So here I was, working for Mattel, finding my dream job in my mid-twenties, but I was not in the action figure group. I was in the Hot Wheels group, and I wasn't really a Hot Wheels guy. I was an action figure guy. But after pitching the idea of action figures for adult collectors, Tim Kilpin transferred me into the marketing group, and the marketing group welcomed me by putting me at a tiny fold-out table with a 20-year-old computer all the way against the back wall. But I didn't care. I was excited because we were going to try to make He-Man toys. Yay! I was a huge He-Man fan. I am a huge He-Man fan. I've always been a huge He-Man fan. And the idea that we were going to try to make He-Man action figures aimed at the adult collector was mind-blowing to me especially because every other line that had been done had been aimed at kids. Now, granted, the last line, the 2000X series, was really cool and definitely had some collector figures, especially at San Diego Comic-Con, but the core show and the core line was still aimed at kids. This was going to be completely revolutionary for the brand, the idea that we weren't even trying to aim at kids, which traditionally is what... 90% of action figures are for, we were going to go for a completely dem demographic. Now, yes, that is Screech there playing with the Seaman toys in an official Mattel ad back in the day. Kids were out. Collectors were in. How in the world were we going to do this? Well, first we had to really look at what does the adult collector want in a He-Man line. They want articulation. They want character variety. They want to be able to customize their figures. There were a lot of different play patterns for the adult, like acquisition, that were very different from the way kids played with He-Man. Well, we were very fortunate that the Four Horsemen had come up with their own version of He-Man that they brought to San Diego Comic-Con. This was completely unasked for. It took us totally by surprise. But we decided to put it in the booth to see what fans thought and to see if this could be the basis for a new line. Now, we already had plans in the hopper to make a King Grayskull figure. The original plan, as noted in the previous video, was to put him as part of the 2000X line and keep that line going. And we were going to use the Ice Armor He-Man figure from 2000X with a new head and a new cape to build our King Grayskull. But once we saw the Four Horsemen's new buck, we threw those plans out and we said, we're going to tool this buck and it will become the basis for all the figures. One problem was, unlike the, uh, shall we call it, removable leg that he had, just kidding, the leg often broke off because of the factory that we used at the time, he did not have a removable head. And I really, really wanted all of the figures to have removable heads and removable armor. As a collector myself, and thank you to Foosh for letting me steal this image. Well, actually, they didn't let me. I just took it off the internet. But hey, Foosh is an awesome site. I wanted all the figures to have swappable heads so you could do really cool stuff, so you could customize, so you could swap the armor. And that meant we had to do a little bit more tooling. And management, obviously, and design were not happy about this. And this was my first of what became many, 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 many fights with design, because design felt that people in marketing were number crunchers. We were people there to figure out how many units to sell and how many stores to sell them at and that kind of stuff. Well, once I showed them the idea that we could take He-Man and repaint him quite a few times and make use of that tool to eco economize it, well, that won the fight, and that convinced everyone to go ahead and green light, a little bit more tooling so that we could have removable heads. The next question was, how in the world were we going to market these things? If we were not going to have them at retail, obviously we had to find another way to get them out there to fans. And the answer to that was MaddieCollector.com. So we wanted to start a web store, not Webster, the character web store, to sell these figures. Now the problem is, 
I came from a copy background. I was in Hot Wheels as a writer. I'll be the first to admit, when I started in the marketing group, I did not know much about marketing plans. But fortunately, Jim Murphy did. He was the brand manager of the Superman Returns line. And I also was able to work with Johnny O'Neill. Both of these gentlemen from the, were in the marketing group, had MBAs, knew how to market and do all of the paperwork and the graphs and the stuff that gave me headaches until I was able to master it after a year or two. So I kind of became an outlier where I was pairing both a marketing skill and creative. All right. So the edict from management was to put He-Man and Beast-Man in a pack together. It was felt that one character alone would never sell, and even Beast-Man was not popular enough to sell on his own. So by pairing him with He-Man, it would let us sell what some people felt was a more obscure character. I made the case that that was not true, that Beast-Man was really popular, and again, one of those many, many fights and arguments, we were able to separate them and do them as two unique characters with two releases, and that's why He-Man became the first single-carded figure and Beast-Man the second, not counting, of course, King Grayskull. All right, how to package them. So this was another big thing. What I really wanted to do was to recreate the vintage card. But this was going to require a lot of resources and a lot of design work from the graphic group in packaging. And I really didn't have a budget. They kind of wanted me to do all of this with as little money as possible. What I did have was this awesome King Grayskull package, which did get a budget because it was a San Diego Comic-Con item. So we were able to create a packaging using the pattern from the King Grayskull package. And we even put that little dimple in there from the original figures, which was used to hold them in. Now it was just a uh, something cool to look at, but it was a little nod to the vintage packaging. Something we also didn't have was entertainment. We had nothing. We had no movie. We had no show. We had no comic. We had no mini-comic. We didn't even have a puppet show. So... What were we going to do? Well, I came in and I proposed that what if we did bios? Like other toy lines, we're able to use those as the entertainment. Now, the vintage line didn't have bios, and most of the card backs were just a cross-sell. But there were variants of the card backs back in the vintage line that not only had a cross-sell on them, but they also had pictures and images which had one single line of copy. Now, the trouble was tracking all of these down. So, the Mattel warehouse does have every toy Mattel ever worked on, but they don't always have every variant. So I had to request every character from the vintage line go through a ton of dust. I actually did this mostly on the weekends. I would come in and I was trying to track down all the versions, sorry this is so blurry, that had the one line of copy, since this was going to form the basis of the bio. And that is what we did. The one line of copy became the last line, the bottom line, of every single bio, whenever possible. So bios were done, it was time to go into production, and the first batch came back with really red eyes, which sucked, but we had to sell them anyway. But the second batch came out perfect. There we had He-Man, finally. It was a lot of work. It was even more work than King Grayskull, but he worked, the head was removable, the armor was removable, he came with a half power sword, a full power sword. This was awesome. We had our first true He-Man figure in almost a decade. But it was the beginning of what was going to be a big journey, and it was not over with He-Man by a long shot. We didn't know how well these were going to sell, but we were willing to find out. Stay tuned next time as we get to Beast Man and look beyond the first few figures to see if we can make a line.